Hi, everyone. I'm Tom Robinson. Uh, I work for NOAA. I'm at GFDL, the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Lab. Um, basically, uh, we have started working in containers, and our scientists know nothing about containers. So <laughs> it becomes a challenge to um, get them to move towards using containers. And so we've created a, uh, a new workflow. We have an old workflow, and we've created a new workflow that will allow the scientists to build their own containers. <clears throat> so um, basically, um, we, the workflow that we have now is called FREE, the FMS runtime environment. Um, and it was developed with the premise that scientists could do climate science and have a life outside of working in climate science instead of having to create make files and figure out dependencies for Fortran um, they the workflow would handle all of this for them and 20 years ago it was cutting edge and it has not been updated very much since then so it is very outdated um, it uh, the part of the the workflow that creates the the model and builds the code is called FreeMake. Um, it was written in Perl for some reason. Um, there's an XML configuration file um, that lists the code. Uh, it lists the different repositories. It was set up for, um, I believe it was using CVS for a while and now it's finally using Git. Um, <coughs> It basically creates a checkout script, it checks out the code, and then it creates a uh, compile script that creates a make file. It also sets up an environment file that it sources. Um, and when the compile script makes the make file, it also runs a program called MKMF, which is for make make file, and that is written in make. And so it uses make to make make files for each of the components of the climate model. Uh, it is something that was written at GFDL. Um, it's, it's good at what it does, but it's not useful in other areas, so it's not very uh, flexible. So some of our code has moved to using auto tools or CMake or something like that, but not all the code has moved to that, so we're still using MKMF. Okay, so um, we're adopting a more modern approach to our command line interface. So for all of our free tools, they'll be, it'll be free and then the name of the tool. So it's free space make now. Um, and it's being written in Python. And it does pretty much everything that free make did for the users, uh, except it's using a YAML instead of an XML file. Um, <clears throat> and it allows uh, adding dependencies. So the, the uh, free make is very system dependent and it it's lists the dependencies. And so some of the newer models have newer dependencies and they can't use FreeMake because of that. So this requires the users to uh, create, uh, uh, add the dependencies that they need, the packages that they need. But it also um, will create a Docker file for users if they want to build a container. <coughs> so uh, we've gotten a base image from uh, Power Tools, the E4S project, which has been very helpful. It has, uh, you know, all of the packages that we need to create climate and weather models. <clears throat> um, we still are creating a checkout script and the make files uh, the same way for both building it on the system and uh, on the bare metal system and for the in the Docker file. We just copy those files into the Docker file, um, and yeah, it just basically generates the the Docker file for the users from a template. And then um, we're using Podman to build, and then we uh, we archive the, the, the OCI Im image, and we uh, create a SIF file from that to run the container. So that's uh, the workflow that we've started to use. There's a lot more that needs to be done still. Um, the the model build time runs much slower if you're using a Docker file compared to if you're just running make on the host system. So that's one thing uh, that is a limitation for us. Um, we also have issues with Podman on our system. So right now users are being added one by one. But if we release this to the you know user community and there's 200 people who want to build containers, that's not going to be extendable. So that's a kind of a limitation of Podman. 
Um, <clears throat> we <laughs> we're not we still don't have a workflow that can run the container, so we have to actually use what we we use what we have now to set up our run scripts, and then we have to go in and edit the run scripts manually. That's not something that's a huge deal, but it is something that we still need to work on. Um, and um, we're still not sure about the runtime on the on the system. So uh, we did some testing with our old system, but we still need to do some testing on our new system to make sure that the runtimes are the same when we bind in the MPI. Yeah, and then, I mean, the, the biggest uh, limitation we have is that our scientists really don't know what containers are, they don't know how they work, and they um, <laughs> there's no good, like, hey, do this training real quick, you know, and for the whole lab type of thing, so we need to, to develop that. Yeah, this is my last slide, so we've, we've already started to roll it out. Um, we have a few models that we are uh, able to build, and um, we're moving towards uh, our model Climate Model Intercomparison Project, that's what CMIP, CMIP 7. So hopefully for uh, CMIP 7, our models will be run using containers and we can share Docker files instead of having to share the, uh, the code and the make files because that was a nightmare for CMIP 6. So <laughs> hopefully containers will make it better. Yeah, thanks everyone.